This is thymol from thyme, and this is menthol from mint. And if you mix these together, they turn into a liquid. Now the critical question here is, is this BS? Is my vortexer just heating these two solids above their melting points by friction? Well, this is the menthol and thymol that I vortexed, and I took it off the vortexer and just let it sit there, and as you can see, it keeps turning into a liquid. But look, maybe this is just residual heat. So let's get rid of the vortexer entirely. This is menthol and thymol just sitting in a test tube, and this is a time lapse over the course of about an hour. Look, it still turns to liquid. By the way, I love watching this menthol fall in. It looks like a glacier melting or something. Now, someone commented on my last short that I was just faking the chemistry, and because I definitely don't take the comments too personally, let me prove to you that I am not just holding a hairdryer or a heat gun off camera and faking everything you're seeing. This is thymol and menthol again, but this time I put a thermocouple in there. And as you can see, not only does it not heat up, it actually cools down by a few degrees. What's happening here is endothermic. And by the way, here's an ultra wide shot if you really truly don't believe me, because again, I just let the comments roll off my back. Definitely. That's what happens. Menthol crystallizes in these beautiful, long, glass-like crystals that gave me an idea. What if I had a menthol bridge and I piled some thymol crystals on top? Now this lowering of melting points actually happens with most mixtures of pure solids, but there are some mixtures, like these, where the effect is especially pronounced. These are called deep eutectic mixtures because when you combine the two solids, they decrease each other's melting points by a lot. Now the underlying chemistry is both fascinating and complicated, and they also have a bunch of interesting use cases, but I just like that they do this. No! Oh, I was recording, thank God. <laughs>